Hello, my name is Brooks Cash, and I'm a gastroenterologist at the University of Texas Health Science Center in Houston, Texas. And I wanted to take a moment today to speak to you about colorectal cancer, and specifically about colorectal cancer screening. A colorectal cancer is an important disease throughout the world. In the United States, it's the second leading cause of cancer-related deaths. And throughout the world, it affects a large proportion of populations in terms of the development of cancer and cancer-related deaths. So it's very important to screen for this condition. Now, when we discuss screening for a disease, that means that we go looking for the disease in the absence of signs or symptoms of the disease. And colon cancer is one of those diseases that often does not present with signs or symptoms. So it's important to go looking for that even if patients don't have symptoms. Now, there are a number of different ways that we can screen for colorectal cancer, and it is recommended that we start screening average risk men and women at age 45. The ways that we can screen for colorectal cancer include colonoscopy, which is ideally the best test that's been identified because it not only diagnoses colorectal cancer, but it can also prevent colorectal cancer through the removal of precancerous lesions, such as polyps, that can turn into cancer over quite a few years. Now, colonoscopy is invasive, it's expensive, and not every country or population has ready access to colonoscopy. So there are other alternatives to screen for colorectal cancer that are recommended in national and international guidelines and serve as the backbone for many national screening programs. And these would include testing the stool for blood. And this is done through what's called a fecal occult blood test or a fecal immunochemical test. Now, some of these tests require actual handling of stool and there are other options of this same test variety that do not require patients to actually handle their stool. And these are designed to detect hidden blood in the stool that may be indicative of a colorectal cancer or perhaps even a precursor lesion. There are another test that can be done, which is a, another stool test that tests not only for blood in the stool, but also for DNA abnormalities that are shed from cells that line the colon. And sometimes we can find abnormal DNA that correlates with either colorectal cancer or uh, colorectal polyps or precursor lesions. So this is another option for patients, but of course does require patients to collect their stool and send that stool into a reference laboratory. So there are multiple advantages to screening for colorectal cancer. It has been shown that screening does lead to earlier detection of cancer when it's still at a curable stage, or it actually, in the case of colonoscopy, can prevent colorectal cancer. And it's very important to remember that if any of the non-colonoscopy screening tests are performed and turn positive, that the next step for a patient should be to proceed to colonoscopy. So any positive non-colonoscopy test requires a follow-up colonoscopy to determine why that test was positive. So I hope this was helpful information. I encourage you to get screened for colorectal cancer. It's a very important thing to do. And through increasing colorectal cancer awareness and screening awareness, we can make an impact on this terrible disease.